Today I woke up with this awesome idea. Hear me out. So far, in most of my videos, I've been demonstrating technology and concepts using Kubernetes as my underlying infrastructure. The past year, I've been trying to demystify container development, that it's not this mysterious place to run apps, that it's actually very simple. I have a Docker development guide, which was my first trial at video editing and filmmaking. Then came my second generation Kubernetes development guide. With the image of change that really makes the poem. In my Kubernetes development guide, I start with the fundamental basics of running Kubernetes on your Windows or Mac when you have no command line or dev experience. We enable Kubernetes, we configure our command line so we can interact with it, and then we learn about deployments, pods, secrets, config maps, services, and ingresses. Now you're more likely not going to be running your local Windows or Mac machine in production. And you're more than likely going to have a more complicated cloud production cluster. So people have been asking me for more real life examples. What is the best cloud provider to run Kubernetes? Now if you had to ask me the same question five years ago, I would have said Google Cloud. It's very obvious. They had a head start. They were first. They had most of the features so it's a no-brainer but we are no longer in five years ago ever since then there's been a constant battle between all the cloud providers to get kubernetes offering available all the cloud providers have been focusing on stability getting kubernetes integrated with their existing infrastructure and features monitoring logging and a bunch of other features. Also since that time, Kubernetes has matured a lot. So because of all the work that the community has put into the project, Kubernetes has become very stable, very easy to provision. You can see in my Docker development guide that you can just enable Kubernetes on Windows and Mac OS. You can also run Kubernetes on different Linux operating systems as a Docker container. So the truth is, in these times, Kubernetes has become really stable across all cloud providers and many cloud providers now have a Kubernetes offering. There is still a lot of debate among the community about which Kubernetes offering is the best. And this is often because people have had a bad experience in the past. Kubernetes was unstable. Cloud providers had difficulty providing a stable offering of Kubernetes. But with Kubernetes maturing over the last few years, it's been really easy easy to provision and cloud providers have managed to get it very stable. Now I've tried multiple cloud providers and I've come to the conclusion that all the cloud providers are pretty much stable. So the truth is we've pretty much reached a level playing field. There might be very minor differences and very minor feature offerings that different cloud providers have, but it's not a deal breaker. So in my opinion, stick to the cloud provider that you're currently using for Kubernetes. All cloud providers are great. Now if you're a developer, my answer is totally different, and this might sound funny, but the best cloud provider for developers is local host. So why do I say that? So I mentioned Kubernetes five years ago was extremely difficult to get up and running. And yes, Kubernetes is a very complex system internally. And as a developer, you should not need to understand everything about it. Nowadays, developers on Mac OS and Windows and Linux can simply just enable a Kubernetes cluster with a click of a button. So off you go and you can access it with kubectl. You have a deployment file that states how the application should be run. You have another YAML file that states how your application is exposed either via port or a load balancer. Then you say kubectl apply. Now your app is running in Kubernetes. You can even attach debuggers and you are that much closer to be running like for like with a production grade cloud system. It's just that simple. So back to my idea, I'm going to start a new series called Kubernetes in the Cloud. We're going to take a look at what it takes to get a Kubernetes cluster up and running in each cloud provider. These episodes will lay the foundation of the videos that will go on top of that, which is diving into each cloud provider's features such as CICD, monitoring, logging, secret management, microservice architectures, Terraform, and all those great tech stacks. We can also take a look at the more advanced on-premise clusters. Now the first video will drop really soon, so stay tuned, like and subscribe, and until next time, peace.